Do you ever wonder why things just keep getting worse? Do you ever wonder if it ever gets any better? Why is it that Republicans keep winning elections and yet the country keeps moving farther to the left? Like every decade, we get more of the same, regardless of public opinion and regardless of the supposed victories of the Republican Party in terms of winning elections. And I'm not even talking about the post-war neoliberal paradigm that we've talked about recently with mass immigration, endless wars, sending jobs overseas. I'm talking about specifically within the Republican Party, despite insane amounts of financial backing from good Americans such as yourselves, despite a very clear outline of why we are electing them to represent us, as evidenced especially through President Trump having a 95% approval rating in his party and it is his party, we still get more gun control, we still pour trillions of dollars into nothing, which makes you and I debt slaves for the rest of our lives, paying off debt for bullshit that no one agreed to, and that was lobbied for by multinational corporations, literally just a state-facilitated transfer of wealth from us to them. Housing costs are out of control, the cost of a college education is out of control, and even that, our kids, they're going to college, they're being taught to hate their country, they're going to public school, they're being taught the same thing. Money is taken out of your paycheck every week to subsidize the indoctrination of your children into future generations. It becomes harder for young people to grow up in a stable, healthy environment, get a job, start a family. Every decade this happens. Like, how do you plan to conserve the country if you are not incentivizing and enabling young people to start families? Like, what are you even trying to conserve? And the answer is actually nothing. They're not trying to conserve anything because the GOP is a political abomination. I have contempt for them. I abhor them. I think the degree to which they have betrayed their voters over the course of, let's say, the last 35 years amounts to nothing less than a crime. The righteous, what is it, the righteous hates falsehood, but the wicked brings shame and disgrace. Yeah, we're going to go over how the GOP has betrayed its voters in terms of President Trump and even recently in the Senate with unanimously voting to sell out American workers. I'm going to name all of the Republicans who I will never support again in any capacity. I'd advise you to do the same. We're going to talk about the future of American conservatism, why this is actually a good thing for us, um, and even something that we sort of predicted a while back. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll not break our arm patting ourselves on the back, but do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. I'm a little disappointed in myself, to be honest with you, because we were supposed to do the updated video about pornography for this November, but then like a week and a half ago, something kind of messed up happened, and I was just out of it for a few days, kind of trying to process that. People on the website, I think, know what I'm talking about, because I did put a video up from members talking about it briefly. So I was way behind and then I started trying to get the research for this all together and then last night I realized that there was just no way that that was going to come out today just because I had to figure out how to condense and then present all this information. So I'm a little disappointed in myself, but it will come out soon. I think it's going to be one of the most important videos that we've ever done on the channel. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then tomorrow I'm headed down to Texas yet again to go on Elijah Schaefer's podcast. So that should be good. A lot of people give him a hard time because they think he's like this fake conservative or something. I don't know. I know him personally, and that's just like not even remotely true. So we're looking forward to that. And then once we get back from Texas, we'll get going on a more frequent schedule here because there was a lot to talk about. But I think that right now, the most important thing that we should be talking about is who our friends are. A lot of the time, actually the vast majority of the time, we as the right like to point the finger across the aisle and criticize the left for whatever they're doing, rightfully so. But the problem with that is that it presupposes that action is being taken by those on our side with the power to do so, which is then what enables us to focus all of our energy and resources towards the opposition, like outwards. And that's why a lot of what we do on this channel is actually just criticizing the so-called conservative leadership, whether that's in media, government, NGOs, etc. Because our success ultimately has much less to do with how incompetent our opposition is and much more to do with how competent and authentic we are which is why I'd guess the plurality of what we talk about on this channel is self-improvement and not like in the cringe influencer sense of you should be getting up at 4.30 and meditating for 20 minutes before taking a cold shower and reading a Dave Ramsey book. And don't get me wrong, I unironically think that cold showers are good, but the point is that it's not enough to simply be correct or to simply be good. This is referred to as the Sir Galahad theory of politics, this idea that, well, I will win because my heart is pure. And unfortunately, that's not the case. You actually have to take the offensive. You have to have the means to do so in terms of infrastructure, resources, and willpower. And right now, I look at the American conservative movement and on the one hand I see incredibly patriotic and good people who can recite passages from upper level treatises and Austrian economic theory off the top of their head but then on the other hand I see the same people and they are demoralized they're disillusioned because they are suffering the consequences of having been abandoned and sold out by the people who they elected and paid to represent them and that's why it's so much more important to be getting young men off vices like drugs and pornography getting them in shape etc because the gravity of the situation that our leaders have put us in through their failures 
or I guess their inaction more precisely, it's put us into a position where our only chance of being successful is to be literally as strong as possible, both mentally and physically. Like we cannot afford to be anything less than sharp, anything less than high energy, in shape, not only because it'll make you more confident, but also because it makes people more accepting of what you have to say because you're going to look imposing, you're going to look epic. Lifting weights is unironically a political strategy. A lot of people think I'm scrawny, which I think is an inevitable side effect of being a 20 year old mesomorph with glasses and a politics obsession, but I'm gonna put a video up that was taken before they shut the gyms down, just to prove that I do practice what I preach. I wasn't gonna do it because it's sort of cringe. Like, hey bro, look at me, but with less clothes on. But 80% of you guys said you wanted it. I guess democracy is not cringe sometimes. I'm trying to prove a point here, which is that every young man should be physically fit, and also that every leftist who makes videos about me is just coping because they know that my friends and I would have bullied them in high school. So anyways, on to the betrayal of President Trump. We have to understand that a betrayal of President Trump is fundamentally a betrayal of us, the people who voted him, into office, especially considering his approval rating with Republicans, and even more so considering the fact that what we witnessed with Donald Trump in 2016 was a political revolution not seen on the right since maybe Ronald Reagan. And even then, I would make the argument that Trump has been more significant than Ronald Reagan. And, you know, that might be weird for some of us to hear because modern conservatism has canonized St. Reagan. But the reason for that is largely branding and obfuscation. And I mean, no disrespect to Ronald Reagan. I think that he was a pretty good president. But the reason that so much of modern conservatism is dedicated to Ronald Reagan is that he is a symbol of one of the only victories that conservatism has had in the last hundred years, which is that we won the Cold War. Therefore, communism is bad and freedom and capitalism are good. And speaking of capitalism, allow me to shamelessly transition into epic holiday gift guide mode. It is I, yet again, here to help you with the tough decisions this holiday season. Look, we all know that men are hard to shop for. Why is that? Because if a man wants something, we just go get it. It's a very simple process, right? Like point A to point B. There's none of this, well, I should wait to see if so-and-so gets it for me to see if they really listen to me when I talk. No, that's dumb. You know what isn't dumb? The iTarget Pro Dry Fire Laser Training System. Not only is this one of the coolest things I've ever seen, it's literally the most important thing that you could invest in right now, all things considered, because the country's in chaos. You never know what's going to happen. Ammo costs are through the roof. Can't even find 22 LRs in most sporting goods stores anymore. Plus, everything is locked down. No one wants to be wearing a mask while they're at a range. So we're at a point now where training with your firearms is the most important thing that you could be doing, but it is also, conversely, the most difficult and expensive thing to do. So you need a way that allows for you to train for little relative cost with your own firearms, in your own house, free admission, no cope shields required, and that's exactly what the iTarget Pro Dry Fire Laser Training System does. Competitive shooters train like this. Our police train like this. Military, they train like this. And most importantly, my uncle trains like this. You're in good company. I sent him one. He used it so much the first night that he wore the skin off his finger because he was operating the slide of his pistol so much. This is the best gift for yourself, for the people in your life who you care about, perfect for getting people interested in guns, perfect for sharpening your skills, really establishing that muscle memory. I cannot say enough good things about this system. It comes in all your standard calibers, so be sure to go to itargetpro.com. Use coupon code DOYLE for 10% off plus free shipping. That is itargetpro.com. Coupon code DOYLE for 10% off plus free shipping. They're a friend of the channel. They're doing great work. Every American should be training like this, especially right now. So back to the content. Very epic, but yeah, that's the message. Capitalism and freedom are good, even though we're not actually free, and even though big business colludes with the government to destroy markets and small business, that's still the message. We have lost ground on virtually every issue ranging from immigration to gun control, fiscal policy, everything. The biggest thing that we have is the fact that the USSR collapsed, which is why 30 years later we're still talking about Ronald Reagan, communism, etc. I mean, I should know, look at the title of my show. So the point is that we have constructed this series of exhausted and manufactured political victories for ourselves, which enable the conservative leadership to make a lot of money from us while ceding ground on virtually every issue, which is why, as you can probably tell, we haven't actually defeated communism or socialism or what have you. It's actually sort of a false flag, to be honest with you. Uh, we've talked about this before briefly, and I want to stay somewhat on track here, but the point is that what Donald Trump represents at his core is a transition of power away from the political establishment that has sold out the American people back to the American people, and that's why we knew that he was going to face obstacles even after he was elected, because in order to drain the swamp, you actually have to work with and within the swamp, which is an incredibly tough thing to do. And that's why you had people in his own administration who were and have been working against him, leaking things, subverting him at every given opportunity, etc. These were people who were never on board with his agenda, they never supported him, and they wound up undermining him to the fullest extent of their power. Think about that. For two years, for the first time since 1953, Republicans nominally controlled all three branches of the federal government. For two years. How did we accomplish that? The momentum of the Trump revolution. And what did we get from that? We got tax cuts. Cool. We got a half-ass Obamacare repeal. Do I like taxes? No. Do I like Obamacare? No. However, those are not the issues on which Trump ran. And frankly, those issues are not a priority. 
Did Trump mention them from time to time while campaigning? Absolutely, yeah. But those issues are not what switched almost 10 million Obama voters to Trump. Those issues are not what brought over the independents to our side. Donald Trump won because of immigration, foreign policy, and trade. Because our country, the average American, is tired of seeing people pour into this country from the third world. He is tired of seeing his country's young men and women go die in the sand for pointless wars that have gone on forever. And he is tired of seeing his country's jobs be sent overseas and being told that being able to theoretically purchase a television for $30 less is worth being raped of the dignity of the American dream. That's why Donald Trump won. But what happened after he was inaugurated? Paul Ryan's Congress worked against his agenda, especially the wall, which was the centerpiece of his campaign, and said, hey, well, you know, let's focus on Obamacare, which they didn't even manage to repeal successfully. And now here we are in 2020. They have betrayed President Trump on the election. We all know that this election was illegitimate. And I ask you this now. Where should our allegiance be? Should it be to a party that has failed us? that has failed to accomplish anything substantive or significant or lasting in the past 70 years? Or should it be to a man who sacrificed almost everything only to be stopped by the aforementioned party? A lot of people have this take of, well, if we stop supporting Republicans and the left is going to walk all over us. I understand that. I do. But I would challenge that with, they've been doing that anyways. The only difference being that pledging allegiance to the Republican Party costs you more money and gives you false hope. That's really the most disgusting thing about it. That conservatism in America is not a movement. It is a business. And the product that they are selling you is hope. But they never deliver. They they're despicable. And the way I see it is that we have over 70 million righteously indignant Trump voters and we're not going anywhere anytime soon. So it is more advantageous for us to starve the GOP of support, of donations, of votes until they either submit to our will by capitulation or our people filling up their established infrastructure. And I think that's our best way forward. I said that a few months ago, people were like, well, no, you can't just take over the GOP. Oh, that's never going to work. But then some other people started saying, yeah, you know, it's probably our best bet for the time being. And now everyone's like, okay, yeah, let's go for it. So. I'm glad people are coming around because we really just don't have enough time to try to build a new party. We just really don't. We need to force the GOP to actually represent us. And it's even more disgusting of a betrayal when you consider how many people have benefited, whether in terms of getting elected to office, making money in conservative media, whatever, literally by the momentum of the Trump revolution, but now they have either directly thrown him under the bus or they have failed to come to his defense. And now they're cementing that betrayal of President Trump, and by extension the American people, in the Senate. And you literally could not write this stuff. They passed a bill in the Senate yesterday with unanimous support from Republicans who control the Senate to remove caps on H-1B visas from certain countries, which is going to effectively monopolize the visa system for nationals coming from large countries like India to come over and undercut American workers for jobs since they will work for less and in worse conditions. And who lobbied for this? Big tech and big business, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. These companies want to displace American workers and benefit from cheap labor at the expense of American families. And keep in mind, what well, literally just happened? What was that big thing that just happened? And is still happening. The government decided to just see what the heck would happen if they just hit the pause button on a multi-trillion dollar economy. They've destroyed the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Americans. We don't even know what the actual unemployment rate is because they don't count the people who have just given up. And so what do Republicans do? What do they decide would be perfect right now? Bringing in people from other countries to take American jobs. Oh, and it gets better. It gets better. They amended the bill. They said, no, we're not just going to have it like this. We want to exclude a country from the program. Which country, sir? China, because they're the bad guys. <laughs> You couldn't make this stuff up. They're running the same play. It never stops. Nothing ever changes. You sell out the American people. You manufacture political victories against a foreign adversary to convince your voters that you give a shit about them. They did it with the USSR. They did it with the Middle East. Now they're doing it with China. Ah, like, nothing gets better for you and me, but it gets better for big tech. Literally big tech who censors conservatives. Big tech, they like the H-1B bill, right? They like immigration reform because that's just being passed around the Republican Party now, which just means yet another amnesty. They like the fact that Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi are trying to push the funding bill through without repealing Section 230 like Trump wants because they do not care that big tech is the single biggest threat to conservatives. They do not care about you. They want your money and then they go away. I will never vote for a Republican again unless they represent the interests of my family, my community, and my country. My allegiance is not to a party that has failed. My allegiance is to honest leadership and that means President Cheeto and anyone who works against my president is working against me and my family my country those people can shrivel up into a dehydrated mass of carbon and donor money in the lobby of the Cato Institute for all I care F Mitt Romney F Marco Rubio F Brian Kemp Pat Toomey Liz Cheney Lisa Murkowski Ben Sass Susan Collins you guys are all spineless sycophantic snakes Little Marco, me and you, big guy, undercard for McGregor versus Paul. WWE career match, loser retires from politics. You've sold us out. You made a lot of money doing it. It's okay. It's okay. We're calm. You've shown your true colors now, and we're not going to forget it. 
We're going to make it our overriding ambition to take power away from you guys and give it to those who represent our interests. Am I a little heated? Yeah. Am I demoralized? No. I am channeling my frustration into action and millions of other people are doing the same. So in a way, this is actually good. And we needed this to happen. We were never going to get anywhere with spineless leadership. And it's better for us to have been put into a bad place that shocked us awake into realizing that than to have been continuously lulled into this sort of destructive path of ours. Happy Thanksgiving, belated, by the way. Hey, it's going to be fun, right? It's going to be a good time taking back the country over the course of the next several decades. Can't wait. We've got good people on our side. They just haven't taken power yet, you know? Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and then of course, share the video with a friend. That's how you help the channel grow, and by extension, that's how you help us take the culture back. You can laugh, but it's true. We're effective. We're excited for the undercard fight. Rubio versus me. Career match on the line. Taker versus Michaels. I'm Undertaker. He's Shawn Michaels. Except no one likes him, so I'm also Shawn Michaels. And then he's like, I don't know, I would win that fight. By the way, this is not like a legitimate threat or anything because it would be a, a consensual, you know, we would sign off on it and we would agree to this. And he'll agree, I'm, you know, I'm in contact with this team right now. But uh, he, I think, because he's kind of got the dad bod, he's like larger than I am in terms of sheer mass. And a lot of people always think that that's the biggest indication of who's going to win the fight. I would take issue with that. I know that my cardio is better than him. I would imagine that my strength level is roughly the same. And so what's going to happen is I just have to dodge his attacks maybe not let him grapple me for the first five minutes, and then eventually he's going to wear himself out. He's going to get tired, at which point I can just, you know, clear him out. Win the match. He retires from politics. I move down to Florida. I room with Tom Brady. Tom Brady and I have actually been planning this for quite some time um, in order to kind of re-cement, or I guess permanently cement Florida as a Republican stronghold since Texas seems to be kind of going blue. We're going to really try to establish a sort of last line of defense in Florida. And so Tom Brady signed with Tampa Bay. Few will take this into account, by the way. And then he's actually going to let me room with him um, in Giselle as I'm sort of doing this thing with the, the Senate in Florida after taking out Marco Rubio. Because that's how it works, by the way. Uh, once you defeat Marco Rubio and he has to retire from politics, instead of getting like a title belt or something, I just, I am that senator now. I just take his office over. So we're excited about that. Uh, yeah, we're in contact with the, the Rubio office. We're in contact with the McGregor and uh, the, the Paul teams, respectively. So we're excited about that. There was going to be a me versus Mark Zuckerberg for a while. That was going to be for, for charity. We're going to do some charity boxing. But he never got back with me probably because he is not a human. So we're focusing on Marco Rubio right now, and we're excited about it. It's going to be good. And no ill will towards him, you know? It's just, just banter, friendly banter. You know, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Just going to get him to retire from politics, that's all. He'll still be able to be a snake elsewhere. I don't know. But thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.